Wait, man. Crazy. Anyway, uh, yeah. okay. So, 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 um, memorable brawls. I'm gonna, yeah. you, I'm gonna start with number five and go to number one. Okay. So five Let's being the worst. Oh, a couple of honorable mentions, yeah. right? Honorable mention: um, Oakley and Barkley. Yeah. Oakley and Barkley uh, preseason game in Houston. Remember they threw down. Uh, Oakley was the man, of course. I mean, Tyrone Hill, yeah. we remember all the, all the things that he did. That was my lowest moment as a Nick fan, by the way, when they dragged Charles Oakley out of there. That's the one, that's the one issue man. I had with you. I felt like you were defending Dolan on that one. Just you know a little what? bit. This, this is a thing though. Indefensible. This, this is a thing. I listen. Oak was my guy. Oak was my guy. Was no more. No, still is. Still is. Okay. Still is. Now the interview, it was, it was a 12 round battle, man. It was a 12 round <laughs> battle. You know, I, I try to bring in some objectivity I yeah. wanted his side of the story. And listen, I just said it was an unfortunate situation, but I feel like there's still three sides to the story. It, I think I think there's, there's three parts to it. It's Dolan sicking the goons on him. Mm-hmm. It's whatever triggered that. And I think it's the, the incident with the security in Oakley itself erupted into something that it shouldn't have erupted into. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, it could have easily been avoided. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna defend Oak until I find out that he did something criminal. Right. I just gotta defend him till I die because that's okay. our guy. I mean, he gave us so much. He, he did. did so much for this franchise. Um, I I just I love the guy. I love the guy. He so did. anyway, Oak and Barkley yeah. honorable mention. Also honorable mention. Uh, Nick Spurs, Oof. Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Uh, you know, the infamous uh, Marcus Camby Van Gundy <laughs> moment. On a day where fair. you call for peace. I know, I know. That was unfortunate. Um, <laughs> if Camby would have connected with Van Gundy fully, he would have split him in half, man. I'm telling uh, you. Oh, my god, That gosh. was the, the wildest haymaker I've ever saw, man. And I love Van Gundy. And I got the opportunity to work with him a couple times now doing NBA sidelines mm-hmm. for ESPN. And mm-hmm. the guy is just the best. He's Fantastic. everything that you see on TV. He's just like that off camera. Yeah. And it's so, one day I went to lunch before my first game with Breen mm-hmm. and Van Gundy. And like, if you knew what, what I was feeling inside, here well, I am. Yeah, it had know, to be amazing, man. My favorite coach of all time and one of my favorite broadcasters ever and the voice of the Knicks. And they yeah. could not have been nicer and more welcoming to me. That's I mean, fantastic. true mentions, unbelievable guys. Yeah. So uh, my, my least favorite of my top five mm-hmm. would be uh, 97, PJ Brown, Charlie Ward, uh, Brown with the illegal yeah. slam. Yeah. I mean, a dirty tactic. Dirty, you know. Yeah. Dirty. I mean, all, all Charlie Ward was doing was boxing him out. Yeah. It was just boxing yeah. him out, a clean box out. We're up 3 1. That game was was out of hand, but of course, you know, the NBA screws the Knicks by by suspending Ewing. Just a couple and, and guys think, stepping over a line I mean, come here on. and there, man. Of course, it's Nothing. a series, man. Just trying to break it up. Yeah. Just trying to break it up. Game six is one of my favorite intros and i can't find it anywhere Mm -hmm. i remember like scott brooks had to play herb williams had to play and at the beginning at msg game six was a friday night they played a a video package with all the guys who were available that night and they said this game is dedicated to all those who believe and i was in my basement in montreal and i was like i believe and i remember (laughs) morning hit a three at the end of that game and that was the one season where they pushed the three they pushed the three-point line in so it would not have been a three any other season and that really bugs me they want game six and then they smoke the Knicks in game yeah, seven man. so 97 kills me because we were going to be the bulls in 97 you, you know, know what that, right? chris childs came on the show and he really he really lamented the fact that you know because he felt like they could have they could have made some noise against the bulls yeah. you know so losing all those guys he i think he played well in game six he had a very good game six yeah but, you know we, we lost you and houston ward in game six and then starks and lj game seven man so hard to bounce back. And it was a wrap yeah it was yeah. a wrap so that that's my least favorite then we go to uh, Nuggets Knicks, um, Ooh, yeah. probably like the last major brawl in the NBA. Yeah. Me- see, this one's a weird one for me because our guy Mello, who I'll defend till the death as well, you know, he's on the other side. That was a source. He gets spot. the cheap shot in. Yeah. Remember the cheap shot, yeah. and he's backpedaling. I was like, ah, Jared Smith man. also involved. Yeah, who gave us great memories. So that was a weird one, but it, that one got ugly. That one yeah. got ugly. In 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 fairness to the orange and blue like they were kind of showboating they were pouring it on when it didn't need to be poured on anymore in my opinion yeah but that whole era was just dark. i mean like the isaiah era probably my least favorite mix history so yeah. they were running up the score and isaiah yeah. being an old school guy chicago guy in the 80s that would never fly so he told these no. guys hey and these guys are trying to 360 in the lane like jr was doing you make a pay the knicks had all their scrubs out there on the floor the, the nuggets had all their starters you know, Jr. and Nate get into it, but that Mellow thing, like you, man, Mellow is my favorite player from Syracuse on down. That night, yep. I was like, oof, you know, cheap shot, and then he's running in the, oh, he's running like back. That, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, that was weird. And then it was Jared um, Jeffries chasing him, man. So I'm wondering, yeah. remember when Jared Jeffries blew that that shot attempt against the Celtics in the playoffs, man? Yes. That could have been purpose. That could have been purposeful. Yeah, right. That could have been retribution later on. I wonder on, if they man. ever talked it out, like when they when he joined. When he came when he back. The Knicks. Uh, they had yeah. to. Uh, they had to, man. They had to have addressed it. I don't know. Maybe I'll get Jared Jeffries on, man. We'll talk yes. About it, man. Hey, yeah, by the way, yeah. Jared Jeffries, I was for Jared Jeffries. He played hard. You know, I know yeah. I knew his ceiling wasn't the highest, mm-hmm. but I got a lot of love for that, you know, 2012, 2013 era of Knicks mm-hmm. basketball. Of course, 2013 was the best that we've had in a long time. But anyway, um, then we get to Nick's sons in Ooh, the mid-90s. That was a good one, man. Doc Rivers, Kevin Johnson. That was a class. Total madness because they, 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 like, they had a little brouhaha. Then they diffused it. And then it like turned into like full blown brouhaha. Yeah. Greg Anthony gets a cheap shot in. Yeah. Uh, on I think it was Dan Marley with or something. With the Armani he, shirt, man. Yes, he didn't yes, care. Yes. Greg Anthony was with it, man. He was with it. Oh, uh, I love number fifty UNLV. Yeah. Greg Anthony. Um, that was just madness. And uh, you know, I mean, obviously that's like the height of the big bad Knicks. Mm-hmm. Ewing's in his prime. Uh, Doc Rivers in his prime. Uh, like I said, Greg Anthony, yeah. you've got Oakley in his prime. I mean, Mason's in the mix mm-hmm, over there. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. that was just – plus, that was, you know, a very good Suns team. Yeah. Kind of crazy that Oakley and Barkley weren't involved. It was in that one, that yeah. One. In that one, they right. were actually playing Peacemaker in this one. It was yes. really Craig Anthony, Stalks. You know, Stalks, every fight, Stalks is in the middle of right. Frick. He, he's Love in there. Guy. He's in there to going toe-to-toe with everybody, man. And, uh, you know, Kevin Johnson was totally out of line. Yeah. Yeah, um, dirty, dirty screen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Doc Rivers was great back in the day. Mm-hmm. Doc Rivers, uh, I went to Knicks camp in 1997 and purchase mm-hmm. from Montreal. My buddy Mo and I went to Knicks camp in 97. Doc Rivers came to talk to us and I was so excited that like a real life New York Nick was in front of me. Yeah. Mike Saunders as well. I remember Mike yeah, Saunders. Trina, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was the man anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's number three. Yeah. Number two is uh, Knicks Bulls, of course. Ooh, um, yeah. Jordan's out. Uh, Derek Harper, the man, 94, 94. Yep. Yep. Jojo English, the mm-hmm. scrub. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They get into that thing right in front of David Stern. Right in, in front the, of David Stern. Yeah. The one thing I forgot to check beforehand was, was that the same game as the Tony Kukoc shot? Was that um, the, the same series? Yeah, that was the same series. Same. That was 100%. That was one that when Pippen didn't want to come back in. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, That was the same series. I don't know if it was that game. That was game three. I don't remember. It, it, it might, it might have game. even been that game. But anyway, yeah. crazy series. We get over the hump. Um, Bulls are trying to act, you know, all tough without their fearless leader. Mm-hmm. Derek Harper, one of my favorite. Me too. You know, Knicks players. Same. That was a huge trade. Mm-hmm. Number 11 from Illinois. Um, first NBA sideline game that I ever did was in Dallas. Nice. And I was at the urinal right next to Derek Harper. And he's like, <laughs> what's up, man? I'm like, you're fucking Derek Harper, man. <laughs> Shit. I'm sorry for swearing. Was, the, was that bad? No, no, like, you're man. good, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. never swear. Oh, but this okay, is what okay. the Knicks do to me. This yeah. is what the Knicks do to me. Like, wow, Derek passion, Harper. Man. Derek Harper. Remember when they say the like best. that? So, the yeah, it was great. It was yeah. great. What a great uh, rivalry that was. So that's number two. Yeah. And then number one. Uh, Nick's Heat '98. Oof. When our guy Jeff JVG gets in there, grab and, and and I loved it because it was morning and LJ. It was the two former Hornets. It's like the dying seconds of the game, yeah. and and LJ's not taking his crap anymore. Yeah. And there's our guy in the Jeff Van Gundy of, in the mix, in, in, man. In the mix. In the mix. Neither the guy connecting. Seed. Neither guy connecting. It's Van Gundy. Neither guy connecting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. You know, none of these fights had good technique. Let's be honest. Like, if you want to see bad fights, you go watch an NBA fight. Yeah, yeah. Most and and if you ever want to see, like, it's amazing to me when you watch NBA players hit the bag, how you know uncoordinated they are. It's yeah. like they're so talented, they're so athletic, and then you see them put on boxing gloves, and it's like, what? How are you so stiff? It's amazing. And then conversely, you ever see an MMA fighter try to play basketball, and it's, it's, it's you know worse. it's comical as well. <laughs> but that one to me was just you know so memorable. Plus. You know, it also brings back good memories. 98 was a great um, run for us because we were the seventh seed. Mm-hmm. No one thought that we'd be able to beat the Heat, mm-hmm. the two seed. And then, of course, 99, eight seed. They're the, yeah. the one seed. But I just love why we will always defend Jeff is because, you know, that right there, right? He, yeah. he was a true New Yorker. He got in the mix. He defended his guys yeah. till the death. He loved fought it. for them on the court, off the court, everything, man. That was my coach. Even when, you know, we made the tip at Ohio, I said, let's talk to Jeff. You know, Jeff was my first choice. Not going to lie. Jeff was my first choice. I don't blame and you. And it's for that reason, man. It's for that. A lot of people say, oh, well, he left him high and dry, you know, when he when he just walked away. 
I said, look, man, he was losing all his hair. Look at all the stress. Right. He couldn't He couldn't deal with it. I know? used to love those post-game scrums where he's drinking the, the Diet Coke yeah. and he's got the massive bags <laughs> under his eyes and you could just see the hair disappearing. <laughs> But he one was just, one, man. Oh, he's yeah. such, I went into like a, uh, like this rabbit hole recently where mm-hmm. I was trying to find the press conference or the scrum when, when he resigned, yeah. couldn't find it, but then stumbled upon the day he was hired against mm-hmm. Philly. Mm-hmm. Remember the, yeah. the, the first yeah, game where they got right blown in. out yeah, yeah. and then they, they ended up beating the 72 and 10 bulls mm-hmm. on the Sunday afternoon um, on NBC. And it's just, it's just amazing to like go back and watch some of those clips of young yeah. Jeff and, MSG with Johnny Hoops and Marv Albert yeah, and yeah. all this stuff, man. Ah, the memories that it gives me, like very few things make me happier than trying to relive those times. It's tremendous. And then the other thing of Van Gundy was the fact that in that whole 99 run, we remembered as a Cinderella run, his head yep. was on the chopping block. Yep. You know, that team did not play well. They struggled. There was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of lows, injuries. He was going to get fired. 100%. He was going to get fired. And Phil Jackson was was angling for the job. There you, you go. Know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the first playoff game I ever went to was game three, second round, 99 against the Hawks. Mm-hmm. And that's the Chris Dudley game. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the game on a Saturday afternoon, the Garden was chanting Jeff and Gundy because yeah, yeah. we all knew what was up and we wanted him to stay. I mean, the fact that they even made the playoffs at that point was crazy. They beat the Heat. We knew that they were going to smoke the Hawks. They yeah, were yeah. they were yeah, like, they were yeah. overrated as mm-hmm. a, I think Big they time. were a four seed or a five seed because mm-hmm. we were the eight seed. We the eight, and yeah. then it was just magical stuff. Um, and then one of my favorite series ever is that Easter. Like no one thought they'd beat the Pacers yeah. in the Eastern Conference Finals. Right. Remember, remember Game Six, mm-hmm. LJ going out and Houston, you know, doing that doing in honor that, yeah, of this guy. Yeah. I mean, it was just and and Ewing getting injured. I think Game Two with the Achilles. Yeah, I mean, the Achilles. This man. is great stuff. This is great it's stuff. Just, had we had scripted. Ewing in '99, we would be in the Spurs. I'll believe that till we would have definitely given him a better run, no doubt. And yeah. healthy LJ, man, you know LJ, LJ hurting, yeah. his, hurting his knee. I mean, I think in a normal, you know, NBA season, he probably wouldn't even have played because right. that knee injury is pretty serious. You know, it's just a just a rough rough situation, man. But like you said, you know, just those stories, man, that that heightened your passion as a fan, and and here we are today, man.